Welcome to the Mindful Musings of Two Spiritual Mamas. We are Alicia and Shelby, here to share our 20 years of authentic friendship, life experiences, and acquired wisdom. Infused with love and intention, our episodes will inspire those who are ready to shift their soul path into alignment with its divine purpose. We will discuss alternative approaches to life's traditional pathways, leaving you with tools in your spiritual toolbox to navigate everyday moments. Knowing and embodying the empowered self on a daily basis is one of the most valuable practices you can adopt. Understanding that you are surrounded by a network of support, both physically and spiritually, will carry you into the next phase of your divine purpose. You are not alone on this journey. We recognize we're on a spiritual path, navigating our day-to-day lives, and in this podcast, we'll share with you our organic thoughts as we grow and blossom together. Welcome to Two Spiritual Mamas, Episode 9. This is Alicia. And I'm Shelby. And today's episode is about creating the new paradigm and what that means and how living outside of our cultural upbringing requires us to follow that inner compass. We're going to be talking about blazing new trails for ourselves and leaving a path for others to follow. Mm -hmm. We'll touch on mindset, personal evolution, new models in business and parenting and It's such a rich topic that we're going to introduce you to some authors and visionaries that you can dive deeper into your own personal interest within this broad topic. Such a broad topic and kind of a challenging one to wrap your head around because we're we're creatures of habit and there's been a way of doing things for so long that sometimes we sit inside of that comfort. We've talked about it in our past episodes, some habits, easy small things, but what we're talking about are huge changes. We're talking about um, really destroying models of um, even, dare I say, governmental models and uh, societal models and mindsets um, that have been coded into our DNA. So I get a little overwhelmed with this topic, I will be honest, and that's kind of why I wanted to to trailblaze the the episode <laughs> because yeah. it helps to talk it out, you know, and it helps to try to understand what small changes we can make um, because this is not just, this is not about us. And that that's actually what this is about is it's our mindset needs to change so that we understand it's about our descendants. This is about seven generations out. This is about our great, great grandchildren. This is about our children being able to have children. This is about us being able to have grandchildren. Whew. You know, I just got so chills. Was- yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah. So, um, mindset is my comfort zone. With this right now. It's what, we, it's what we have control over and how exactly. we can personally shift. Exactly. And uh, whew, so let's start. Okay. So here we are leaving an old paradigm uh, that has been ingrained in us for decades, centuries. Um, and a lot of these are power over models, including race, including gender, sexuality, status, This is the competitive model. We've talked about that in other episodes. Religious hierarchy, slavery, and the mindset that we are slaves. Um, These are really heavy topics and they linger. There's residual to these and how to, sometimes we say just shake it off. It's like, oh, these take a lot of shaking. Yeah, (laughs) So I'll be shaking throughout this recording. (laughs) (laughs) But again, if you have this mindset, you can hold the vision. And that is something that I believe in 100%. So if we have the mindset, we can hold the vision. Um, I think that's what we're here to do as well as trailblazers, myself and you, mm -hmm. that we want to hold the vision for the next generation, for the people that are following in our footsteps. So 
Mm -hmm. Love that. If you have the mindset, you can hold the vision. Yes. And that's, um, my vision is positivity. You know, I know in the last episode, Alicia, you talked about love and I think hope. And we were just talking about this, that a lot of people, I'm shocked, have zero, none of that. They have no hope. They have no vision. They're just like, eh, it's all going to hell. And I'm like, oh, really? You live inside of that? (laughs) And so. (sighs) Yeah, that's sad for me to see people with such a negative outlook. And Mm -hmm. I know our listeners are ones that are, you know, working towards having a more optimal vision, more personal growth and and positivity in their own lives. And and so we're not going to linger there, but it is good to notice just how many people are still stuck in that. In that negativity. So visionary visioning. (laughs) I don't even know (laughs) if that's the concept, but um, so I was recently introduced to an author, uh, Tyson Yunkaporta. He wrote Sand Talk, um, which his book is called um, Sand Talk, How Indigenous Thinking Can Save the World. And I was just kind of knocked off my center, which then I was so psyched because I was able to find a new center with this, this information of looking at, um, the difference between a settler mindset and an indigenous mindset. And like to put it in a nutshell, the settler mindset is that I have rights, you know, I deserve, um, I'm here to conquer if you would. And the indigenous mindset is I have obligations. Um, I choose, I think I'm, I'm here to serve. And, you know, I've gotten like uh, a little bit, I crimp up when I hear you're supposed to serve. I'm like, oh my God, I'm tired. (laughs) You (laughs) You serve all day. That's why you're tired. (laughs) (laughs) But really like looking at serving in a broader a broader uh, vision and understanding that we are here to serve our planet. We're here to work in community and collaboration and a collective, um, not just mindset, but actual presence with this planet. And it's pretty clear that we have not been in that mentality for quite some time. Yes. And the effects are pretty obvious. So what can we do? How do we, how do we shift this? Um, and, I just want to quote that some of those words I just shared were from Stan Rushworth. He is an indigenous elder of the Cherokee um, descent. So there's so much wisdom (sighs) that we can tap into. I know you and I've both done a lot of training with different indigenous teachers. Uh, You're actually in a program right now, right? And Mm -hmm. I think honoring the land, we can start there. We can start with just, like you just said, the stewardship of Mother Earth in a way that is conscious that we were in connection, collaboration with this Earth. We really need to consider preserving life here moving forward for generations to come with our conscious choices on how we purchase, what we're choosing, what businesses we support. So mm. that's all big part of it. And so, uh, like we mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about parenting and that's something I have been doing with my daughter. She has a very healthy appetite for shopping and I might be the one who taught her that. So I, (laughs) I own that, but, uh, as of late, you know, there's so many online places and she gets attracted to the price tags. You know, this is only a $4 shirt. And then I have to ask and stop her and say, let's look into the background of these companies. Let's look into what they do for community service. Let's look into where they're located. And these are just those simple awarenesses that I, I'm trying to bring into my children's lives. And we can all do this as a community and, and legitimately try to be a little bit more local. You know, we talk about this in our food episode, but buying your clothes, you know, uh, I know a lot of things aren't available, but how can we shift this just a notch down in previous episodes we have talked about cording emotionals you know emotional cords and, and how to drop that pulse down and i would like to do that with certain shopping outlets with you know i haven't gone to walmart in 
d- decades. Me you know, no, that was we, obvious choice. Yeah. to not do that. Mm-hmm. And and so look at if you did a little map of like where everything is coming from that you bring into your home, and not just food, but clothing and shoes and and products. Um, where are they made? Who is yeah. making it? Is it an independent business? Are they owned by larger corporations that are just out to make money? Are they supporting natural resources and people's fair wages? I mean, there's so much to look at and think about, but it doesn't take me into a place of overwhelm when I just think about one item at a time. If we're talking mm-hmm. about buying this one type of clothing, you know, I've looked for bamboo is an amazing source that they're able to make a lot of clothing out of these days and, and a lot of companies that are looking for sustainability and ways to give back, planting trees, all the things that we can think about long-term sustainability for the planet. So, um, And that's a way that we can take this power into our own hands and reclaim that true nature of sovereignty and self and personal power. We've talked about that before too, uh, versus the power over and, and the Mm. top down corporate model of, you know, the minions. I want you to talk more about that slavery concept that you were going to talk about because this top down model, the power over model, the idea of being, um, not our own sovereign person leading our own direction in life. Whew, it kind of makes me want to cry. So I'm sorry if I'm a little quiet. Um, we just, we are from the work that I, I study with um, the ET, the channeling from higher, higher dimensional beings is that our DNA is, is literally being changed right now to remove the slavery genetics. I mean, I, I don't understand the science of it, so this is very paraphrased, but uh, slavery has been too long on this planet. And so, yes, sovereignty is my, my, my concept of the opposite of slavery, um, but sovereignty with an understanding of collaboration. And um, this collection that there is not one who power powers over us, that we all have our traits, we all have our our benefiting qualities. And that's actually a concept I was talking about with my friend just before we got on the call today is that we're not supposed to be good at everything. You know, there's this quest I think we have now. And sometimes even in my own self, I want to be sovereign. I want to be independent. I want to own my home and I want to own my business. I want to be almighty. <laughs> super <laughs> woman. Super me. And then I'm up here and I'm like, I'm really lonely. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I, and I want to collaborate. And then I, I do these podcasts with you. And I, I feel this collaborative, um, dynamic. And I think that's what the indigenous mindset is about is that collaboration with others and, and how, uh, if you could, the, the ladder, you know, you climb the ladder when you're collaborating, when you're inventive and, and I just don't understand who thought it was a good idea to, to have this slavery model where it's just demeaning and you're diminishing and you're withholding the growth of these spectacular people because you think they're less than like, it just, I, I don't, I, I could, I can intellectually understand it, but in my heart, it makes zero sense. So. Yeah. Well, you were talking about essentially at this point, the archetype of the slave and how we believe that someone else has the power and that we need to do what they say. And Mm. we're being told all the time from government and from uh, corporations and, you know, how to think, how to buy, how to be in the world. You know, if you work for a large company, you might just not be seen for your individual gifts and talents, like you were saying, Mm. this this specialty that we each have. And I think that as this planet evolves into this new paradigm of living, we're each going to have this special niche and we're all going to support each other. And we're going to have so much of a web of support that is going to 
just look so different than the way that businesses are run and how the society is structured right now. I think going back to that more indigenous tribal mindset is so powerful to look at. So we're excited to share. I want that podcast that we were listening to to be noted here because it could be a great one for our listeners to listen to. Yes, that is on Writer's Voice with Francesca Rianen, and it is Tyson Yunkaporta, who's the author of Sand Talk, How Indigenous Thinking Can Save the World. And I just got his book. I, I've read a few pages. I can't wait to dive into it. Um, he's just got a lot of information out there, podcasts, YouTube links. Search him up and check it out. Uh, what I wanted to bring up is these beautiful um they're like principles, these four principles he talks of. And wait till you hear how simple this is. It's, it's fantastic. Um, his concept is that we are custodians of the earth. And I cannot even tell you how much I love that. And I hope we do a whole podcast about this. Um, he talks about these four principles, respect, connect, reflect, and direct. And the thing that's been going on for the last few centuries is that we've been doing these principles, but in the reverse order. So if you think about it, we've been directing, we've been charging in as these pioneers, as these heroes, these explorers. And then when things don't actually go so wonderfully or beautifully, we reflect on it. And then we think, oh, maybe we better connect with these people and, and see what they're really up to. And then the last step is that, oh, gosh, these people are actually beautifully intelligent, connected to the land. And then the respect comes, where, in fact, that is just totally opposite. So, uh, again, I want to talk about this more uh, in, another, uh, in another podcast. But to start with respect, to get to know. You know, Alicia, it's almost like when I have a conversation with somebody, I always try to ask more questions before I start to shout out advice. You know, I really want to respect where they're coming from, what they're, um, even if they're looking for advice, you know, I want to get in tune with the person and then make that connection with them, help them to reflect, and then let's go ahead and take action and uh, use this direction. So uh, yes, Tyson Young Comporta, awesome. Oh, I'm sorry, I should even say where he's from. He is from Australia, and he is of the Appalanche, Appalanche clan. Appalach, that's what it is. Appalach clan um, in Australia, Aboriginal. Absolutely amazing. So Tyson Yunkaporta was interviewed on that podcast. Yes, and yes. Exciting information to come in just to help us shift our mindsets. So another thing that Tyson Yunkaporta brought up was the detrimental impact that the hunter-gatherer concept kind of gave us that, the, you know, the men were the hunters and the women were the gatherers and it put us in our places. And that reminded me of the inspirational um, selection of books by Gene Owl, um, Yes, the, the clan of the cave bears. Yes, I, that those books were <laughs> what made me an adult reader. That was like mm. I tore through those books. I remember staying up until two, three in the morning because I just couldn't put them down. That the the oh, the the lead character being an herbalist Ayla. was amazing yes. for me. Yes. And then just seeing how she was such a pioneer in that time because of the way she was raised. I mean, it was. So cool. Yeah. And I mean, she, in, spoiler alert, in the first book, she gets um, kicked out of the clan because she chose to hunt and she was a female and that's not, that wasn't allowed, you know? And so that was actually recommended to, I believe both of us by Judy about 20 years ago. I, I will probably start reading those again because the, the knowledge in those books is, is vast. True. But, yeah. And they've been around since the eighties. Yeah. Um, but there you go, folks, if you need a good read. Um, and that, you know, I'm just relating all I'm and connecting all my dots here. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to learning more. So cool. One of those concepts you mentioned, Shelby, was epigenetics and how we can, with our mindset and with our choices, right? It's, it's sometimes less chemicals in our environment, what we're choosing to buy or what we're choosing to eat that actually turn on our healthy DNA activity um, versus some of the concepts like being predisposed to 
cancer or hypertension or some sort of hereditary uh, health issue that through epigenetics, which is the choice to eat differently and live differently and, and have this new paradigm mentality, you can actually, science has proven, change your DNA. And it's a physical activation. It's like a light switch. You can turn on certain genetic code in mm-hmm. your body that will keep you living healthier. And it's activated through some of these inspired ideas and then inspired actions that we're talking about here and just trying to share to help lighten it up for people and help you connect with what within this topic really inspires you. And what I hear from my my old roommate, Lori Ladd, who's a spectacular um, channeler and spokesperson, is that the children that are being born this last decade, I, I think it might even be a little bit longer, are being born with, with this upgraded DNA. They you know? are. So, so it, yeah, it's really fascinating. And so there is hope. There's a lot of hope. <laughs> <laughs> Spread here. the hope. Spread the hope. That's and right. if we could... Uh, if you're good with the epigenetics, jump into hope. Um, cause Absolutely. I have this frustration with, I want to watch a movie with my kids and let's see, there's a zombie apocalypse or there's an end of the world, you know, and, and I actually watch them because for some reason I, I like even hope inside of a of a tidal wave that takes over the whole world. I'm like, I want to watch the one family get saved. And I just had this, like, and I love, it's either that or my kids are like, oh my God, mom, are you going to watch some sports movie where the kid comes from behind, you know? And I'm like, yes, I am. And you're going to watch it with me. Because <laughs> it's a feel good movie. But um, that's like what, what you're ingesting. <laughs> It's what you're choosing to watch and what you're choosing to activate within you. So is it activating hope or is it activating fear, right? Right. That like okay. end of the world and all this craziness is happening. And- well, I'll admit during COVID, I had this obsession. If you look at my journals, I'm like, today I watched three movies on space and it was all, you know, the the world, earth is is gone and now everyone's trying to find a new planet. And I was like, when are they going to start making a movie about, this is how we save the world. Like, I just want, I want to shift. If I had any control in Hollywood, I'd be like, excuse me. <laughs> Maybe it's not a blockbuster, but to me, if we started to feed that channel, feed that ideas, again, feed that mindset into our children and, and start telling the stories of how we, we move forward. There's this really cool um, blog, Dream a Better World, um, and that was so fun to read. And it's just like, we figure out all the carbon issues. We, we plant more trees. We come together as a world. And like just reading that article got me so pumped up and so excited. I so, love that you sent me that article because I totally, I was in rapture. I read the whole thing. It was so cool to be so inspired. Like, oh my God, what if these things do become reality and we can save the planet in these special ways? And what if business does shift? It's a great way to vision a new mindset for the planet. Yes. And another awesome person and movie would be the David Attenborough. It's called A Life on Our Planet. And it's essentially mm-hmm. his entire life over all of the documentaries that he made from the 60s to the 70s and showing tribal life for the first time in the Amazon that he got to, you know, visit all these amazing cultures and animals and and then looking at how little life we have left on this planet, how many species have been killed off. And so you get to the, oh, look how cool all these movies are that he made when he was in his youth. And then... You see, oh man, okay, it's gone down. We're getting, we've got less here than we had before 30, 40 years ago. But then the last 20, 30 minutes of the movie is so inspiring, gives you that hope, tells you steps you can take, certain specific things that will make a really big difference on this planet. And I just love Yay. that. I love it. Maybe that's what we need to compile is a hope 
the hopeful, um, whether they be podcasts or movies or documentaries, like, cause that's what the kids right now need to be watching and having that. Yeah, of course we're going to be okay. You know, I do feel like we're in this doomsday atmosphere all the time. You know, I know my boys play these doomsday video games and mine too, you but know. it's really the fear that it evokes. And I think people being stuck in fear, COVID has brought a lot of fear for people Mm -hmm. around where we're going and what's going on and how disconnected this last year has, has made us. So this is about blazing a new trail and following your own, the the beat of your own Mm -hmm. drum to Mm -hmm. how can we do it differently. When we come out of COVID, how are we going to restructure our society? And how are you personally going to reconnect with your community? I'm a super outgoing person and so is my partner. And we were both talking about the strange anxiety that we're feeling about connecting with friends in the one-on-one or in small groups or <laughs> getting out in the world. And it's it's strange feeling for or us. Guilt. You feel guilt yes, about it? Those feelings. Yeah. It's all like, oh, is this going to hold me back or am I going to push through this and reach towards what I really want, which is the community and the connection? And, and how can I create that now? I mean, we're doing it with our moon circles every other Wednesday night. We invite people to join our community there so that we can hold ceremonial space for those changes happening energetically and within. And then how are we each individually going to do that in our own local communities? And I just, I I don't mean to plug our moon circles, but for me, being able to connect with, with all of you guys every other week has been such a grounding source of Hey everybody, how are you doing? Whoo, you know, and and so I encourage everybody out there to to find that community. I mean, this is going to be part of the shift is that we are more local. And of course, the moon circles are actually quite across the continent. Sometimes we have people from 3000 mile circumference. Um but finding the community when we're allowed to be in person again and and being local and caring about what's in front of you, you know? And I, I think that's something, um, that's been a little bit lost. We chatted about this earlier. How do you pay attention to what's in front of you in your schools, your communities, your elderly, your government? You know, we've got a great, um, political, uprise. I don't think it's called uprise. It's a great movement here where we're, we're about to have elections and we have a bunch of youthful, great new mindset, um, coming into the, into the polls. And it's like so thrilling for our town to have some new blood and some local motivation. Um, I, and I just think that's going to be the sustainable way of the future. Um, Right. And it's choosing people that are coming into those roles with a new mindset and it's choosing a new mindset for ourselves. So what is that mindset, Shelby? We're talking about it for our parenting and for our businesses or within uh, the work environment. And I think it's really shifting from that power over model that someone else has the power and that you need to do what they say versus collaboration and Mm -hmm. really tapping into the wholeness of each person. When I was managing a wellness department and I had about six employees, one of the women came to me and said that it was the best experience in a team she'd ever had. First of all, the team mindset, and I know you can talk more about that, but also I treated her like her family mattered. It wasn't just her showing up to work and doing a job for eight hours a day. It was the time off she needed to be with her mother who was ill. And it was being flexible to include her needs. Mm -hmm. And, and she was so respectful and a great hard worker and, and contributed so much to the team that it's like she does, she absolutely deserved that time off in that flexibility because she brought so much to the table and, and I was open to receiving it 
because I didn't want all the power. I wasn't going to be in control of, uh, you know, I wasn't a micromanager. I really wanted everybody's gifts and talents to shine and for them to um, be in the role that was best suited for them in that department. And that's the new model, right? Mm -hmm. That team mentality, the holistic collaboration. And it also provides them a chance to understand that all parts are, of them are important. We've we've gone into a um, at all cost model. We've talked about it before, where I have to give, give, give. My job is is my defining characteristics, or you know, and that's not. I don't want anybody working for me that feels that way. You know, as much as I say, great, I'm glad you love coaching, but I want you to love yourself more, and I want you to you know really um, hold yourself in a high integrity and your family and what those that you love. But I also want you to communicate and um, be kind throughout and the process. And show up yeah. fully. And show up. <laughs> present. <laughs> show up when you say you will. That's always a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's instead of being a demand or a requirement, it's more like an agreement. So, right? Yes. These are the shifts. Sacred agreement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we both agree you're going to show up at 10 a.m. to teach, you know, these kids or to, to do this job. And... And you do that and then you get paid. And the thing we didn't talk about yet, Shelby, is that money can be a controlling factor. And I would love to insert the idea here that... (laughs) I'm making faces right now for everyone (laughs) who can't see me. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Money, right? It's a topic that people have a lot of blocks Mm -hmm. around or challenges Mm -hmm. with because it does feel like it can control us Mm -hmm. and it can be a limiting factor to making some of these conscious choices because those things usually do cost more money than, like you said, going to Walmart, which we don't do because, you know, even though it's dirt cheap and it might, you know, fulfill that need for whatever plastic tool you might need to go buy there, but it may not be as sustainable as the bamboo tool. Like a lot of my kitchen stuff is not plastic anymore because I want to use more sustainable things and it can cost a little more, but we can also choose a mindset and a belief that the divine source is our source. Mm -hmm. That money is not more powerful than the divine (laughs) <laughs> right. Then the energy of hope, then mm. the the power of connection, because a lot of things can be resourced to you just through connection, right? There's all these great uh, neighborly apps now that you can connect. I'm on Nextdoor and I donated to someone in my community my son's old clothes instead of dropping them off at Goodwill. I'm not saying Goodwill is a bad organization. It's just not as amazingly direct direct as seeing the woman, you know, pull up in her minivan and be so grateful when I hand her a bag of clothes for her son. Mm, Absolutely. It's funny as you're talking, um, the word abundance and plenty, and I actually had this visual of of dollar signs coming off a waterfall. Like it, there is a certain mindset, and I've adapted it a long time ago. And I have been fortunate that I I moved to a place that there was a need for what I'm great at, and I have had an abundant business. Um, I worked my tail off for it, um, but I pointed my toes the whole way. No. <laughs> Sorry. Random gymnastics. Oh, gymnast. Funny. <laughs> I get crap for it all the time. They're like, Coach Shelby, you're just sitting and your toes are pointed. I'm like, I know. It's just the way of it. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's a mindset. Like you can get stuck inside of money controls my life. Or I've I've always been like, money will, money happens. It will happen. It will flow. It will come and it will go just like the tides of the ocean. And I have been fortunate, um, you know, and I speak from a place of fortune um, with with a comfort zone. You know, I grew up with a, with a comfort zone. I always had parents that I could call if I struggled. But I do invite everybody out there to let go of that hold that, it, that money, money can have on you. Let go of the hold of anything and just allow... Um, the divine faith and hope and and just imagine you know what what is the new paradigm for you and 
Even if you just plant one seed every week about what you think it should be, you know, that's good. It's a good start. Yeah, planting those seeds and then watering them with Mm -hmm. reminders and like conversations. Exactly. The connections, the the purchases, and it's the little things and they, Mm -hmm. they build up to bigger environmental changes and cultural shifts and, and yeah. Yeah. So to, to wrap up the money conversation, you guys all know, I love Tosha Silver. She's one of my teachers, but she wrote a book called it's not your money. And it's an eight week program. Essentially you just walk yourself through that mindset mindset shift. So she's one of the resources for this money mentality shift. And I know there's a lot of life coaches out there focusing on shifting beliefs around money. And my coach from a long time ago helped me rewrite my story and my relationship to money. And it really helped so, so much. Excellent. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Okay. So survival of the fittest. Let's throw that out the window. What do you say? I love it. Let's talk about how. (laughs) Survival of the most, the most collaborative, survival of the most communicative, survival of the The most. Collective together. Yes, yes, yes. And it is, it is exciting. And in that um, dream a better world, there's talk of everybody had to get their, their leap together and work together to solve glo- uh, climate change. And it's just, a, That's it's a global David issue. David Attenborough yeah. says too, it is a global shift and it's all of our individual consciousness making these choices and, and making the shift within. So if you need more direction on how to follow some guidance and, and nurture more of that internal, those tools like like how to find your inner compass. There's a book called, it's uh, Martha Beck. She's amazing. And she wrote two books, one that I read all the way through in love and the other, which I uh, just, the title alone was inspirational. It's called Finding Your Own North Star. Mm. And that's that internal compass and finding your own niche like we were saying, each person has their own gifts and talents and how do we develop those, find them Uh, in soul coaching. We devote a whole day to journaling about your divine purpose and kind of figuring out your own mission statement. And we each have our own gifts and, and we bring that energy and we can evolve the planet together through that for sure. And then finding your way in a wild new world is Martha Beck's other book that she teaches this cool word. It's called wayfinding. Again, an indigenous term for how to mm. really tap into that energy flow that is within nature, that is within mm. the elements, and how you can follow your intuitive flow of of noticing those signs and symbols and all the things we talk about, mm. and and using it as a word, wayfinding, how to be your own wayfinder. So you be a trailblazer and you can be a wayfinder and oh, I love you can it. really embody these, these concepts of change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And, and I love going back to that indigenous mindset and what are my obligations to serve this planet, to serve the future, to serve, even to serve the past and honor the challenges and the struggles, but also honor the brilliance of our of our ancestors. You know, a lot of times we talk about past life regression and releasing the trauma, and it's like, what about celebrating the the brilliance and the um, ingenuity? Is that how you say that word? Ingenuity. 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 Thank you. <laughs> of of our ancestors and let's get excited about the future um the future generations and give them hope that they have what it takes you know that's what I want to do with with the kids and and say you guys are smart enough you're brilliant enough you'll if if you drop into your own um what am I trying to say your own light your own brilliance your own strongest points take the time to 
nurture that. And, you know, I wanted to say earlier, I can't remember now, but I know it's cultures in Africa. They, it, it takes years and they, I think they use their, their shamans to determine uh, intuitively what that child is born to be. And then they nurture that child into that beautiful role their whole lives and how like gut-wrenching that that from that culture uh, we we turned those people into slaves you know they had this beautiful beautiful path and and way of being and then uh and then we changed their story so we're changing it back. Let's change it back. <laughs> Let's change it back. Yes. Yeah. Let's celebrate everybody's individuality and and all the light that we embody here and create a new reality. Yes. Beautiful. One moment at a time. <laughs> right. Well, thanks for chatting this out with me, Alicia. It's a big topic and we'll come back around after I listen to more beautiful podcasts and we <laughs> yeah keep, and we'll keep share researching share the resources we love supporting each other and there's so much to go around that mm-hmm. we wish you all the best in your explorations of self and blazing a new trail for yourself and your family and your community and your whole culture and this whole planet Absolutely. Thanks for listening, everyone. Blessings.